This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. a very good morning to everybody and wow what a beautiful beautiful morning it is here at Juma Private Game Reserve as you can see we are at Gauri Dam a little bit of cloud cover but it is gonna be wonderful and I am so stoked to be back again good morning everybody my name is Cedric and behind the camera with me on Wendy we've got the muscles and paw and he's teddy bear so yes I am so good I'm so glad to be back and I'm stoked to go out here and just going to take a look exactly what's been happening so many things have been happening over the last two weeks while I was on leave and uh, well now it's time to catch up on that but for this morning I am just going to sit here for the time being here at Gary Dam and just listen out for anything that's calling we did have some lions calling a little a little bit earlier just south of uh, the dam towards uh, twin dams i think old stevo he is going to go and follow up on that but just yes, joining us on this beautiful sunrise morning this morning but is going to be on uh oh, it's steve and panda and <laughs> down there in amakara in the eastern cape we've got eric and morgan and our beautiful team in johannesburg our directors for this morning is jordan and chulu and our tech guru that side is la sejo and our tech guru yeah at juma is marcelo's yes this is live this is interactive so if you've got any comments and questions that you want to send through to us and of course if you are watching on the youtube channel make sure that you do go and subscribe and join so you can send all those comments and questions through if you are watching on the wild earth website make sure that you do register so you can also send us all the suggestions comments and questions for this morning ah it's so good to be back so nice to be back from the the western cape and back to the low felt because i don't know low felt weather to me is just so perfect perfect nina good morning thank you so much for joining us on our sunrise safari yes i feel all rejuvenated this morning and i think the two two weeks down there in the western cape walking along the beach listening to the waves crashing around it did me very good so but i was now very 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 keen to get back out here oh i'm gonna hardy dog that's just flying by bye bye so what I'm going to do this morning, I'm going to go head up to Biffleshook Dam. I'm going to go try and see and follow up on those lines around there just to see what's happening as well as see if we can pick up on uh, our beautiful young male leopard, Olmarips. Uh, it is, uh, as I said, I have missed out on quite a few things that's been happening here over the last two weeks. So uh, yeah, I want to try and catch up on all that. Michelle, thank you. Yes, <laughs> oh, as I say, I'm just I'm just happy being back this side, and uh, it's good just being out here in the bush, and uh, yes, try and catch up on all the all the stories that's been playing out here, and it's quite a few things that's been playing out here. So I'm going to slowly start heading over to Biffleshook Dam very shortly. I actually heard hippos fighting around here this morning. I don't know if. Uh, I heard hippos uh, grunting and snorting around here <coughs> at the dam and I don't see a single hippo in the dam so I don't know if these hippos have actually moved away and maybe gone further north from this dam maybe towards uh, Biffleshook uh, Cutline, in other words further north from where we are but yeah, well we are going to slowly start heading towards the northeastern corner of uh, Juma and let's go and take a look at the weather at all locations for this morning.
Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome to the morning. Welcome to the Safari Sentinel. Hello, my name is Steve. I'm joined all the way in the back there by Panda. We're out and about on the tracks of some lions and it is going to be a cracker of a morning. They are heading straight down this road. Just uh, double checking every now and again. They're still walking in the road and they are Last full day for me on this stint. It's going to be a cracker. I can feel it. I can feel it already. Let's just hope these lines haven't crossed out on the southern boundary already. And who are they? I don't know. I don't know who they are. They are lions. I don't know how many. It hasn't really been clear. Cedric said he saw tracks of quite a few or he said of a clumby, which is a pride, towards the dam. I've only really seen a couple on the substrate where I'm tracking. It's not the best. Okay, so here there's, when it's nice and soft like this, I don't think you're going to be able Okay. Drive, okay. There's one, there's two, there's a smaller one, there's three, and that's just on this path. So, three or four lines walking in a path. Well, that one's gone the other way. Four, 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 maybe five. I can't tell. Once there's more than three or four walking on a track, it becomes very difficult to tell how many tracks or lines there are. Okay, well, we're gonna send you back over to Cedars while we get out of this little dip. This morning we did have some lines. Cedric's probably gonna follow up one. So it's going to be quite interesting to see what plays out in the next actually what's busy playing out not even what's going to play what's busy playing out now
Well, we're going to still try and get to Biffelzook Dam and move slowly into the easterly direction. I think let's head over to Eastern Cape to Amakala as uh, Eric wants to say good morning. Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here yet another day, another sunrise safari you alive with us here at Amakala Private Game Reserve in the very southern parts of the Eastern Cape, South Africa, where we are watching an absolutely stunning sunrise with myself, Eric, and Morgan behind the camera. And we're going to be your eyes and ears this morning as we watch this beautiful, beautiful red orange glow on the horizon as our sun prepares to emerge. This is absolutely amazing. Doesn't take up the whole sky, just the majority of the eastern horizon. It's got to some of the clouds and these are, oh, they're very, very thin clouds but they do make the sunrise look really, really cool. Absolutely amazing. Now, the birds that are talking to us at the moment, pretty cool. We've had uh, the Cape Robin chat, a uh, dark cap booboo. I didn't manage to catch the name there, but indeed, this is very, oh, it's breathtaking. It's absolutely stunning. And the evening star is still up. or well, the morning star, as we call it now. I call it the evening star and the morning star. And uh, yeah, it's the last star that we can see in the night sky in the morning. And it's the first star that we can see in the night sky in the late evening. And that star is actually Venus. Which is pretty cool. Doesn't look like a planet. But indeed it is. Now, obviously there's a beautiful glow on the, on the horizon. It'll take a little while for the sun actually to get to the horizon and to actually start coming up probably start rising at about uh, quarter to seven, half past six. Anna Marie, we are ready and steady to show you as much as we possibly could this morning. There's been a bit of a, uh, 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 well, not a twist, we are going to cross over to the very northern part of uh, Amakala to see if we can't go and maybe, maybe, just maybe find Miss Pumelela and her children. So yeah, that's very exciting. We're going to see what happens when we go that side. But also, I mean, it's just, it's going to be a great, a great change for us because we know obviously we haven't been over that side in this shift or actually in a while so it'll be quite nice to see what the area there looks like after the rains that we had about a week and a half ago no not a week and a half ago but a week ago actually it'll be quite quite interesting to see how green the area is as the majority of the reserve is doing incredibly well I've actually heard a uh, Eastern Clapper Lock. It's pretty cool. They, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they do a bit of uh, displaying. And uh, when they do the displaying, they flap their wings very quickly together, which makes a clapping sound. And then they fly up and then they come down. Dar similar indeed. We cannot be disappointed with what we have been spoiled with this morning. This is, it really is amazing.
Uh, there's the dog cat boobles out there. There's a lock. I'm, I'm thinking it's the Rufus Nape lock that's making a noise. And there's also a long claw or a couple of long claws. But uh, very nice to be able to hear that clap lock. They sound like a ticking time bomb when they come down. It's strange. They go, but that's when they're coming down. You would think that they would make that noise when they go up. But when they go up, they make the flapping noise. Really, really cool. And it's also pretty interesting to watch. And they're very shy. And they don't do it very often when they know that you're around. <coughs> Of course, I heard a song by Green Bill. Some Hardy Dars. They don't sound too happy. Oh, it really is lovely. Starting to get a bit more color and a bit more light on these lands that we call Amakala, which is quite nice. And uh, the glow, the amount of glow on the horizon is actually shrinking a little bit. And it's getting smaller and smaller. Less of a band, less of a, like a, a big band. And now almost like a small strip of orange. but still very, very beautiful. And just sitting here listening to the environment, I've heard the jackals were calling earlier. It really is soothing. Justine, uh, hmm, that's a good question that I do not know the answer to. I wonder. I've I've heard secretary bo secretary birds calling, but never never so early in the morning. Um, they they I don't think I don't think they they indulge or get stuck into the into the morning call. I think they the ones that kind of just sit or well, not sit in silence, but they, they watch they watch from uh, from their perch spots. I don't think they get involved too much. Hear some crows now. Juma Safari Girl, well, we love to hear that. Uh, morning, a morning sunrise motivates you. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. We hope the sunrise motivates you to do amazing things on this beautiful Thursday morning. What other birds are here? Chris, it, it, it almost does. It it really, it really does. You know, this is definitely something that you sort of, you experience in the evening. It's astounding. It really is. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a oh, different type of clouds above us. And they all seem to be heading in the direction of the sunrise. 
Not very many clouds. I mean, the majority of the sky is pretty open. Rather interesting clouds. But, uh, it's going to be another warm, warm day today. And uh, funny enough, you know, when we were on our way to this, this is where, where we are now is pretty much the ridge line. And uh, when we were driving on the way here, there was a lot of warm patches that we drove through, which are very, very nice. I'm sure it's going to be lovely and warm this morning. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content. Thanks, Eric. Love those little warm pockets. Beautiful thing about these new Land Cruisers. <laughs> it's got a heater. <laughs> it's very nice. Pro only problem is that the, the door's open. Not a problem at all. So everyone, we've got all the tracks. We're coming down to a junction and uh, they've disappeared. As they do, we're just going to go around this block here. Sort of elephant activity here. Go around this sort of twin dam uh, towards the dam side. Whole group of lions. The one came from the south to meet up with them. It came from uh, Little Gowry side. So no doubt the <laughs> Hello Bark Spider. Did you did you all see me did you all see me move out of the way of him? Oh Mr. Bark Spider. If you're not a fan of spiders, everybody, just um be aware that uh, 
it might be a little bit difficult to look at but is that the morning he's going to start gobbling up his web recycling it for the next use Cedric I think would be jumping in his in his skin right now hey Panda and a paw as well not a dangerous spider they will build their webs at night Mabel nightmares loading sorry the spider has built its web right across the road it is a, a dangerous place to play my friend Thankfully, I saw you at the last second. The lions are going to be right here somewhere. Steve, did you go south uh, in the riverbed here or? Uh, towards Mamba, then I came out here. There was just one track coming up. Bob and Weave, did you see that, Darcy? Man, that was some cool skills, hey? I just saw this black, black blob heading for my face and I dodged it. I'm going to go back into the tree, attach his line a bit stronger, and then maybe start pulling all of this in. I'm going to copy this to uh, Mulawati straight down to Twin Dams and see if maybe if there's somewhere lying here. I haven't got anything else. Copied. I'll just go around the western side here and let you know. Very beautiful, Doc, my lover. Very beautiful. And uh, you can't even see it, or you can practically can't even see it anymore. It disappears. It looks just like one of those little pods now. How do you feel, Panda? The spider nearly landed on you. You're okay, eh? Yeah, but I mean, if it landed on me, that was going to be a different case. <laughs> different story if it landed on you. Dion, a fabulous camera work, Panda. Well done. Good job. And good night. Good night, spider. And we'll see you tomorrow when you start your day once again, or should I say this evening. Okay, well, Cedric is on a mission up into the northeast. Let's go see how he's getting along. But, uh, yeah, no, Steve, I think uh, yeah, bark spiders, they are another story. Those things are very scary and very creepy. And I can imagine that spider falling on um, poor or myself. I think we will both, both of us will be off this vehicle very quickly. So, yeah. All right, so I've just uh, came into the area where uh, my reps was. Um, the kill is still up in the tree. I don't see any sign of him. So we're just going to go around a bit to the dam area. Just going to follow up around at the Bifflesook Dam just to see if uh, maybe he might be lying around close to the water. Um, but yeah, no, no luck on him so far. 
But there's still a lot of uh, meat left on the impala that's up in the tree there. So uh, still a lot of food. And you won't just leave that. And this is that drainage line is perfect for him. I think that drainage line is nice and thick. So at least he can feel much safer there in case of anything like hyenas or even lions coming into the area. Um, it's, he's got a, a lot of trees to climb up into and uh, as well a lot of little areas to kind of sneak away from other uh, predators. I'm not used to Wendy. I'm so used to Rusty's. Oh, that's why. Forgot to take it out of. Uh, yeah, low range. <laughs> no, it's out of low range now. I'm so used to Rusty. I've got, I've got such an easy feeling with Rusty right now. Yeah, of course, jump, jumping onto Wendy. That's fine. Getting back into that's exactly Jordan. Getting slowly back into it. But let's go and sit at the dam. I wonder if the crocodile's still here. It pulls the crocs still here. Yeah. Is it? That's nice. All right. So Godzilla number two is still here. And then just before I went on leave, uh, this crocodile had a water buck kill, like a young one. Anna Lee, yes, uh, the real MC is on Wendy today. The real MC, Paul and Cedric. Yep. Thanks, Anna Lee, for joining us as always. But let's see if we can find something exciting this morning. I think Steve is very much hot on the trails of those lions. So I'm crossing fingers that uh, he comes right and he locates him somewhere. Got a feeling maybe Treehouse Dam, Twin Dams area. That's been just before we left. It sounds like they're calling from that area. So, oh, okay, the light's going to be very sharp in the water. It's not going to be great for him, poor. And there's a crocodile there. But, um, Paul, do you think I can try and swing it? Like, yeah. A little bit more. Swing. Swing now, eh? Let's see. Oh, I love this crocodile. And I don't think we've had a crocodile in this dam, like, you know, I'm going to say like a, a resident for many years. I can't even remember last when. I know, I remember there was a crocodile that came in here for like a day or two and then it just moved off again. But this one, it seems like uh, this crocodile has been staying here for almost now, coming on to like a month and a half, which is fantastic. Nice as to have this. Oh, no, he's just gone under. I'll just have to play the patient game here. Well, look at the steam coming off the water. Beautiful. Marula Shortcake, yeah, if you've got a bigger crocodile coming in and feeling like, no, listen, I think uh, I want to take over, I want to take this dam and have it to, to myself, and then, yeah, maybe it'll chase this one away. But, uh, you know, as I say, it, we haven't had many crocodiles coming to this dam, so the chances of another one actually coming here is yeah, a very fine few between that. So I don't think we will get that happening, yeah. But it is possible. It's always possible, especially if it's a bigger one, much bigger croc. Wow, matriarch wannabe, I'm not too sure where this crocodile comes from. Like, you know, I, I'd have thought, we first thought in the beginning, we thought it might have been Boris, one of the crocodiles from uh, Chitwa, uh, with a like the tail that's missing or the tip of the tail that's missing but uh, that is not the case this one's got a full tail and uh, both Boris and Vlada is still there at uh, Chitwa Dam so I think this one might have come from the north not from the south I think from the north I didn't really get any tracks that day when uh, this crocodile ended up here at this dam there's no sign of any crocodiles moving from the south here to this dam itself so I have a feeling from the north. A beautiful grey heron. And it's just it's pretty much standing on the side of the water there. It's busy preening itself. And it's stunning mist that's coming through. Isn't this stunning? Ha, ha, ha. 
Uh, Jordan, you've got quite the imagination. So I've got Jordan, our director, this morning, saying it's. Uh, it seems like you know one of those uh, performing artists that come onto the stage, and just before they come out on the stage, they've got that big smoke machine that blows all the smoke out there, and then like you know, kind of come with a, a, an amazing entrance to the to the performance. And uh, yeah, I think Jordan, I think this one's almost got that same kind of effect. Huh? <laughs> a little Natal Spurfell that's running in the background, two of them are running by. Maybe they're gonna try and go for little seeds around that there. Nope, they're gonna go right past. Anna Maria, it's a beautiful morning. It's stunning. Uh, it is absolutely stunning. As I said, I've uh, I had weather there in the Western Cape. That was uh, the first week I was there. It was miserable. It felt like uh, I was back in the UK. With uh, it was cold. It was raining continuously. It was did not, it did not even let up at all. It just continued raining day and night, and it was very cold. And uh, yeah, that. And now just coming back to the low felt again, it's amazing. Gaz, yeah, yeah. Gaz, <coughs> thanks. Yeah, no, it's good just to be back at my second home. Well, actually, I'll, I've, actually, I'll call this my first home. <laughs> if you think about it, I'm here six weeks, and then two weeks I'm off. So I think, yeah, to me, this is my, this is my home. I always feel just uh, so uh, like in touch and with one when I come back to the Sabi Sand. I love it. And when especially you get sightings like this now with the gray heron that's just busy preening itself here in the mist um, or the steam that's coming off the water, it's just, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm a zing zing. on safari.
Okay, copy all the Zoe, check Zoe. Welcome back, everyone. Fresh, fresh, fresh tracks of these lions here. And they've gone straight into the block here. We are practically sniffing them now. But everyone's getting very excited. I'm very excited. I am actually feeling like I'm about to bump into them. I can feel that. Okay, where are these lions? They've gone into the block. They must be hunting. I don't know who they are. There's lots of lions calling. I'd love to show you the tracks, everyone, but I'm so excited with the imminent finding of these animals. Yeah, here they are. Tracks. Yeah, I got the tracks on Rebecca's heading north. I'll check Zoe's around um, and if they don't come out there keep going towards Western Quarantine but I'll be coming up straight now they're straight on the road oh it's so exciting it's very exciting I'm getting getting very excited we are the guys on the radio are so excited for our tracking that they keep thinking we found them but um, we haven't found them we're trying everybody we are trying Yes, still going up, still going up, still going up. Oh, I can feel it in my tummy. Feel it in my tummy, feel it in my toes. Very exciting. Um, I don't know if you want to see uh, check her out off my side. That normal route he walks. Oh, where did they go? Oh, still there. Still there. I reckon we're going to find them on Western Quarantine. It's interesting. They've done a whole loop. It's almost like they went to go gather a friend. So everyone, I'm getting very excited now. Now, if these lions, <laughs> the, the tracks that came south, it's going to be very funny that we're tracking them back to where we first found their tracks. But these look very fresh. They are moist. They are moist. It is the best time, Ray. Best, best time to be in the bush. Best time to be. Oh, wait, did they go through there? No, we're still on the road. We're coming up to the Omar Word Place, everybody. Just by the way, just thought I'd let you know. But uh, now I'm aware that these tracks are fresh. Whereas the Omar Words Day, someone had driven over them. And you're like, what are these tracks doing here? Another oh my word moment. Jordan is rooting for it. Our clay, these tracks are still on uh, Rebecca's, heading straight towards Zoe's junction. Always rooting for it. Okay, well, when you come back to us, everybody, uh, I'm yeah. almost certain we're going to find these lions. So let's send you over to Eric one more time. Well, good luck, Steve. We really do hope that you find those lions. We have found probably one of the biggest airlines Amakala um, has. There's some big bulls here. Um, I know of three of this caliber that roam around on this side here. Now, <laughs> sheesh, these things are absolutely huge. I'm sure definitely in the 900 kg mark it's he's surpassed that uh, i think he's definitely in between a ton and 900 kgs because goodness gracious 
is massive. Now, airline bulls, funnily enough, they don't actually engage in combat when they are trying to figure out who's more dominant. They uh, obviously, the bigger one, you know, they kind of size each other up. They stand next to each other and size each other up. And obviously the smaller one will be the one that will then have to become submissive. But, uh, no, I've never seen Elon Bull fighting. I've seen him pushing each other around, like one was pushing the other one from behind. Um, and, uh, you know, was really pushing it out the way. But I've never seen Elon Bull's actually connecting horns. I'm sure it would be something colossal to watch. I'd imagine it'd be like bison, bison fighting or buffalo fighting. And they, you. But um, uh, it's obviously now a little bit too far for us to hear it, but his front legs, front hooves will click together Agatha, indeed, they always, especially the bulls, they always look muscular. And um, very, very big and strong. Look, they look like the, the if, it, if the Hulk, look, if the Hulk was an animal, he'd definitely be the earland. Isn't that beautiful? I can see the bush that this bird is calling on. I just can't see the bird itself. In fact, I can't see both of them. The Bok Makiris are hiding very, very well. And uh, we are about to be kissed by the sunlight. Martha, Yelland are the biggest antelope in the whole of Southern Africa. Uh, Africa in general. But yeah, so that would make them the biggest antelope that we have here on this property. And uh, I mean, sure, look at the size of this one. He is huge. The word Yelland if I'm not mistaken, comes from the Dutch word, which means elk. And obviously we know elk is a North American and South American, I think, maybe South American, but North, mostly North American uh, deer, mammal. I'm not too sure what you class elk underneath. <clears throat> They, the earland are loud. Now, when they walk, I can hear it from here, but I don't know if the, the microphone is going to pick it up, but he's, he's clicking his hooves and they, it's very, very loud. And um, <clears throat> another kind of way that males will compete with each other is they will obviously make a, try and make a louder click in the hooves. Um, not as like an act of intimidation, but to kind of to display more dominance. They feel more dominant if your click is louder, your hoof click is louder than that of the males next to you. In two magical African wilderness areas, the Masai Mara in Kenya, the Great Kugu National Park in South Africa, five expert safari guides follow a cast of compelling animal characters and the never-ending stories that define their lives. The Cat Report documents real stories of real predators, as witnessed and captured by a band of obsessive wildlife filmmakers. <laughs>
uh, shrubs before, uh, mostly in the Western Cape actually, but uh, I've seen them doing it here, which would suggest that they are mixed feeders. Mixed feeders obviously have more than just a variety of foods to choose from. And now that everything is lovely and green, I'm sure they're going to be very, very, very happy. Now, obviously on this side we have a lot of the general game that we get on the other side of the reserve. The only animals that we do not have here is we do not have elephants, we do not have lions, we do not have rhino, and we do not have buffalo. Uh, Morgan's just going to swap indie cards, changing the light a little bit. Uh, leopard have been seen on this side of the reserve. By um, There is a camp here. <coughs> Excuse me, it's called Quartermains. And uh, the guides from Quartermains are probably the ones that will have the most chance of seeing leopards as the campers tucked away into a, a lovely valley where you almost get zero wind and uh, and there's a valley that i think for sure there's a leopard living in and uh well one of the mornings they were coming out on drive and the call came in that one of the guides had seen a leopard but briefly he saw it very briefly, which made ov obviously all of us very, 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 very jealous. And naturally we all came rushing over the side, but to our disappointment, this leopard was not seen again. And there's also no hippos on this side of the property. So no big game, no predators except for Pumalela. Pumalela is probably one of the the only predator that we know that we've put here. And her little kitties. Uh, the rest is all animals that have decided they want to, well, creep onto here. A lot of nocturnal life uh, uh, in this area. You know, the brown hyenas are very active uh, on this property and have been seen mobbing our Pumalela. Darcy Miller, we don't... I No, they are... They used to be ostriches on this side. The ostriches are now all just on the main reserve. We actually saw, I think we saw them yesterday while we were sitting with the meerkats. That black wildebeest is going off again. There's a pied crow above that tree there. And he's flying off into the distance, probably coming from his perch spot to start the day of looking for food. No, 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 no. I'm seeing these little flies in front of me and now thinking, absolutely not. Please, not day two of feeding on flies we don't need another run at this we were absolutely bombarded by them yesterday I mean bombarded is, is I don't think the right word we were suffocated that's what I think we were suffocated by these little flies yesterday goodness gracious now I'm seeing not the ones that we had flying around us yesterday. Little smaller ones, actually. And this one's now flying around in the car. 
and the sun is now also starting to come out now which is very 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 nice we're going to start feeling some warmth which is uh gonna get the day started i'm sure the bird life is going to pick up in a minute now that it starts to get a little bit warm and uh no, very excited to be on this side of the property. This is obviously my favorite area of the reserve. And where we're going to have to go to start looking for Miss Pumalela is my favorite kind of place of the reserve. And uh, it's got a very, very nice view overlooking quite a lot of Amakala. So very, very excited. But um, oh, just incredibly happy to be in this area again as uh well it's taken us not too long but it's taken us some time to get here obviously coming from the very west oh, very interesting we're going to now send you to take a look at a clip it's telling us more about South Africa's geography. Must remember this is not live, uh, not live content. It is all pre-recorded. Southern Africa has a rich variety of life. From aardvark to zebras. It is home to almost 10% of the world's bird, fish and plant species. Covered with rolling grasslands in the west and the low fald in the east. In this low-lying subtropical climate, charismatic large mammals feast on the natural vegetation. Where broadleaf trees and thorn trees coexist, interspersed with long grasses. Leopards use the dense thickets to hunt. And the trees of the woodlands as their personal pantries. To the northwest, the savanna biome is one of the largest, occupying one third of southern Africa. The Kalahari is home to a diverse selection of animals. Where a healthy population of lions thrive, always in competition with one another. Smaller predators effortlessly blend into the environment to catch their prey prospering from the nutritious grasses and palatable scrub. This is an important stronghold of iconic antelope. Southern Africa's diverse landscape allows for a multitude of species, both fauna and flora, to coexist and thrive. Yeah, well, 
as you can see, the diversity of fauna and flora here in South Africa is amazing. Um, you know, I think even for us, that's why, like, going for me now, going down to the Western Cape and just seeing all the different uh, species of uh, fainbors that you get around there in the Western Cape is just amazing, as well as trees and plants, butterflies, birds. You know, it is, it is so different from down there to what we get up here in the low felt. And um, that's why I always say, like, you know, if you're in South Africa and, uh, you know, first tour your country, you know, tour around here, go to the, the mountains, the Drakensberg mountain range. It's just amazing. Some of the hikes that you can do around those areas is, uh, is incredible. And um, that's why I always uh, try and do as much as possible. And the only place I've, I haven't really done uh, you know, all kind of travel down south into south in South Africa itself is uh, pretty much the western areas of South Africa. So I haven't really done like the real western coast. It's some something that I really want to do. Um, but if you go to the central areas and all that, like the Karoo, uh, the Karoo is also just amazing. It looks like very bare land there. But if you go take a walk around those uh, those places, I mean. Uh, the, you know, all the reptiles, all the different species of reptiles that you get to, you know, your skinks and your lizards, your snakes, um, the insects, uh, yeah, you know, it is such a, it is such a wide range of stuff. That's why I think, uh, yeah, South Africa has got amazing places to go and tour and go and take a look around these areas just to enjoy every kind of thing, yeah. All right, but on top of that, talking about uh, traveling all over the show, I think uh, I'm coming on to the eastern side of uh, Juma at the moment. I looked around there where Marips is, uh, no luck on him. I'm sure he's lying there somewhere, so I'm not going to go and push him and try and get into areas there. So I'd rather wait till if he's in the open and then we can have a proper view of him. But uh, for now, it looks like there's still a lot of uh, meat on the kill that's up in the tree. And uh, no luck on uh, seeing him there because it's very thick. Nice little drainage line for him. So yeah. Let's do the eastern side here. Yeah, apparently, I heard that they had uh, line tracks, male line tracks, all the way down towards Leadwood side. So, pretty much here yeah, on the south, southeastern corner of uh, Juma. Um, you can see, you go follow up on them because yeah, we had so much lions calling this morning. Um, it seems like maybe those uh, females have crossed into the west or west of Juma. They've crossed into maybe Simabili or Arethusa Safari. Uh, and I know Steve was hot on their trail. But I'm going to try and go for these male lions and see if we can follow up on them. It's a beautiful morning. The sun is shining nice and warm. Lionel, thank you so much. You said, what did I miss about Juma while I was on leave? Oh, Lionel, I think everything. <clears throat> it's so difficult to say what because First, I've missed uh, the characters. I've just missed being out here in this beautiful uh, wilderness of ours. And as well as I've missed uh, all your viewers as well at home, you know, just to have this interaction always with everybody. It's, just, it's always so amazing. I love it. So, yes, as I say, I missed uh, all different aspects. And of course, missed uh, old Mr. Muscles. Yes, man. Good, Good man. man. <laughs> So yeah, no, I always miss everything about Wild Earth, you know, when I leave here for that two weeks, I think like the last three, four days, I was just like, oh, I just wanted to get back as well. Right in the beginning when they found my rips. And of course, with uh, had the issue with the snare and all that. And, um, you know, my heart just dropped. My heart just dropped. I felt like I had this lump in my throat for like a few days and all that. And, uh, so that's why I was really keen just to see him again now, um, just to follow up on him. Because yeah, that is something that we didn't want. That's, just, that's something that we didn't really want to, how can I say, see and witness now. But I'm glad that he's got good help. Once again, Sabi Sands, honestly, Sabi Sands is just fantastic. The team of Sabi Sands, uh, the vets, uh, the, vet the wildlife veterinary around here as well, brilliant. So, you know, that's why I give him, I'm very positive about his uh, recovery. Very, very positive about his recovery. So, you know, it's going to take time. It's always like that. Things do take time. But uh, as long as he's got uh, that antibiotics in him and uh, he's, it's been treated, that's the main thing. Hello. 
lot of elephants coming up and down here. I just want to see if we can pick up on some elephants for the morning, which will, which will be very nice. Nice to do get some elephants again. All right, well, we're going to continue down this uh, road on the eastern side. Let's head over to Eric in Amakala. Oh, good luck with your elephants, Hedrick. We're sitting here listening to some baboons in the distance, <clears throat> watching some beautiful, beautiful uh, water buck. Well, we've got two adults and uh, four little youngsters. There's no way possible that those two females had all of those babies. This is clearly the crash. It's time for preschool and they're all learning about their ABCs or learning learning about the dangers of the bush. Oh this is adorable. They are all very very cute. <coughs> mm -hmm. Now she's moving off. Come along children it's time to leave these people. Or shall we just stare at them? No, stare at them. Oh, the female at the back, or the female on the right-hand side, she's fairly... Uh, she's not as old as the one on the left. I'd say they're probably about two or three years apart. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content. But not like a, a biggish body of water. This body of water where they are able to drink some water. And the, 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 the hollow hairs are what make, oh, what allow the animal to actually float and to stay buoyant when they're in the water, giving them a, a bigger advantage when wading. 
Oh my goodness, what are you doing there, young boy? You are too young to be doing that. Oh my goodness, he really is, eh? At least take her to dinner first. Oh my goodness. If uh, a big boy saw what he was doing there, he'd get in big trouble. You can see these females are not having any of it. It's uh, it's obvious that she has come into estrus, and that's exactly why he's smelling. I saw that look, a kind of the posture when he came in very very quickly. He came and just look. He came in with his nose really. He was just sniffing, 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 sniffing. I mean, he's very persistent incredibly persistent. I'd say he's probably about two or three years old. And uh, the big boy is coming in here. There's going to be trouble. Oh, there's going to be trouble. Big boy's running. Oh, you better get out of there quickly. Anyway, we're going to send you now, now to take a look at the virtual safari that uh, Steve was involved in. Good morning, good morning everybody. We've just caught up with a baby, a little group of baby Koki Franklins coming out of the wet, wet grass. There's been lots and lots of rain, no doubt. They are absolutely saturated. Hello everybody, my name is Steve, I'm joined by Gat. Well, we're gonna head out this morning, see what animals we can find that have been moving after the rain. Now, we heard some lions calling when we were in the tent last night as James was finishing the show probably from the sense of Juma. So we're gonna go scratch around there and see if we can find where they've gotten to. Zoom in, zoom in Lovely, enjoy. We've got uh, tracks of a, of a lone hyena here heading down Philemon's uh, dip and follow up. So we've got some buffalo tracks here, lone buffalo bull. Kind of see the indentations here. So just going up the hill over here. We've got a couple of lone bulls hanging around at the moment on Druma and they would be optimum prior meal for pride of lion. Uh, two, three lionesses, potential, but normally for a pride with a male or two or four plus individuals. That's what these guys serve the prize, but not an easy animal to take down. Um, but it is the lion's responsibility to sort of pick off and remove the old buffalo bulls from the population. So we'll see if we can track this guy down. Maybe we'll have some lions following. Who knows, it could be quite an entertaining morning. Best kind of Monday morning traffic. I've spent a bit of time in the last few days talking about behavior and something going on with this herd. I think it might be the female on the left there is not very welcome. This herd's not responding to us, but responding to that one female. But might be an element of us involved. Noticed how they stopped looking back and the trunk was sort of poised very good indication that the herd is not 100% in a good space and uh, should be approached with caution lovely herd of elephants mobile down the road we shall spend a bit of time with them see what they get up to So just observing the behavior now notice how the herd is bunched together the female's head here 
is a little bit elevated. You see, she's not in a relaxed position. And where are the babies? There they are. They're in amongst them. They are sheltered. They are concealed. They are pretty much out of view. So you encounter a herd of elephants like this, although they seem to start being, they're starting to relax now. You encounter them like this, there's no point going closer. Just allow them to make a decision and respect that decision. I've had a little conversation with each other. They've decided they're going to go off road. It's been so special <clears throat> once again to spend time with these elephants. They've been sort of accumulated together as a group and they're mixed up a bit and they've all crossed now to one side of the road. They all seem to have relaxed quite nicely. I don't know what it is that got into their nostrils. I don't think it was us at the end of the day. Um, they all seem to be quite relaxed again now that they're back in the thickets. But we're just going to work around this area. We haven't seen any other tracks of any big predators, but it's possible that they might have had a small encounter with something that put them on edge for a little bit. But as we can see now, their behavior is one of quiet feeding. Teaching the youngster how to access the food. Snob thorn being gouged and stripped the nutrients and the medicine and that youngster is close at hand to see exactly how it's done Very close to Chella's den. Chella had her. her den was just over here. I never saw the cubs. I never spent any time there, but these tracks are coming straight from the dam, the dam, old dam wall, and then crossing the river right over here. And then up onto Leadwood and the fire break. Seemingly to here. Can I go in? Side of the block. It's going to be difficult. 
time finding animals or big cats these days because the water is abundant. They came down from here, slipping and sliding in the mud. One, two, three, at least three lionesses. So everyone, a bit of a culmination to the morning drive. Tracked the lions all the way up towards central um, and sort of heading north and maybe a little bit east. Uh, we're on Cheetah Cut Line now. There was a track heading south on Cheetah Cut Line, but someone's driven on it. We haven't managed to relocate in those lines. It's possible they've gone over to Torchwood, but the time is running out this morning. We'll probably come back into this area this afternoon, see if we can maybe figure out maybe they still are on Juma. It's possible they've crossed east, so we'll just check in with the other guys as well. Hello Dewey, have you seen any lions this morning? How about a leopard? There was definitely leopard tracks heading in this general direction. There's somebody following up on them. I haven't been able to get hold of them. Very likely the tracks of the one and only tortoise pan. Well, whitey has been very scarce this stint. I think James got him on his first day, if not second day. I haven't seen more white at all distant. So we'll carry on after our sojourn here at the watering hole with Dewey. 
we'll have a sip or two of coffee and then we'll head over to the Moati River, go look around Mamba, Ledwood area for any signs of Tlalamba and where she might be possibly trying to stash little cubbies. That is the plan. Now that the energy and intensity of the lion tracking has faded. Steve, good luck on uh, looking for Tlalamba. Yes, it is going to be amazing if we can find her once again. And uh, well, apparently she's got the little milk pouches there. So it's going to be interesting to see if she's had a cubs or she's going to have cubs. I'm not too sure. I mean, I think uh, Jamos and them told me like you know, they think that she's had cubs somewhere. So that's going to be nice to follow up on. And uh, well, you know, it's all up to her. She is the one that's going to decide when she's going to introduce us to the cubs, when she's going to take us to the den site. And uh, yeah, we can't wait for that day to come. So yeah, interesting times, interesting times. All right, I'm coming out onto the, I'm still on the south of Juma now. I know that they said that tortoise pans, uh, or I'm not going to say tortoise pan, but the male leopard tracks coming south on on uh, Zoe's, and I know this is his usual route. So I just want to see if he hasn't crossed over into Little Gary because he usually comes down this road. You don't see anything there, huh, Paul? Nothing. He usually comes down this road and he'll cross over here. So I just want to double check here quickly. Let's just double check. I haven't heard anybody following up on him this morning all right there's nothing that's a good thing that there's nothing coming coming across here that's always a good thing all right so let's go up this road so that male leopard usually likes to cut across come onto this road and he usually comes down here let's go and quickly look at some of these pans around the side it looks like uh jimmy had some good rain over the last two weeks i saw steve and uh, jamo's all kind of ducking and diving from the rain uh, So yeah, no, the little pads are all nice and full. Riley, yes, we will find a leopard. I'm sure I'll pour myself. We will put our heads together here yeah, and uh, see if we get lucky with uh, Mr. Tortoise Pan, which would be fantastic for the morning. I just don't want to miss any tracks here. All right, let's go a little bit further on. As well, I was thinking hyena dens. I think I want to start to start poking my nose my nose into some of the hyena dens around Taxons Road. Just want to see if anything has maybe made its way that side. And we haven't really kind of uh, had any hyena cubs for quite some time now. I think this has been quite a long time without having little hyenas running around. So it will be nice just to take a look. And I saw that the I saw that. Uh, was it, I think it was Koa, Gangarika, Ribbon, and there was another one, Comet, was seen on dam cam last night. So you can see they're still hanging around this area. So yeah, I'm hoping that we can pick up on maybe a new den sometime soon. But anyway, well, we're gonna continue up this road. Let's head over to Amakala as uh, Eric has got some red hartebeers. I'm sitting here with some red heart beast. The, the highest group of red heart beast. Now, we are in the area where we want to be now, and this is where we're going to start looking for Miss Pumelela. Um, <laughs> excuse me. And uh, she was left here last night or yesterday evening, or well, not exactly here, but somewhere in this area. So we're going to you know, have a look. We're using the animals to try and maybe find her. So they all would have slept up here last night, so they may have smelt her. I've found that there's a lot of animals that have moved 
further it's further south from this area which does suggest that she maybe was walking around and that they've all decided no 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 we're gonna leave this area red heart to be a little different they you know unknowingly sometimes they walk themselves into trouble but uh, uh I don't know, these hard to be as can be a little bit big for her. Not that she's never taken one down, she she has. But it's not the usual prey source. As it is only just her that is hunting. Uh, I'm sure her cubs are starting to learn now. Obviously with the three amigos there is three there are three of them. So any oh, any kind of prey is really doable for them because there's obviously three mouths and six sets of paws that can help bring down an animal whereas with her it's just her that's hunting for her family so she's got to go for small animals but she can't just go for all small animals she's got to go for like the medium-sized ones especially now that her cubs are a little bit bigger it's really hard to be still getting a little bit boisterous with each other here heard a bit of grunting I'm sure there'll be some males in and amongst this herd that will probably wanting to fight with each other. I can hear a glossy star, not a glossy starling, a cape starling. <coughs> Joseph, uh, no, not all antelope. Um, you know, sometimes it, it will be like a, a group of females that will decide we're going to go this way. But uh, in most antelopes, there will be that one male who, he, he, you know, he doesn't hang around the herd so he can leave them around. He hangs around the herd so he can mate with all the females when they come into estrus. What was that? Okay then. We've got a male impala who's chasing a female impala. Yeah, the boys are... Phew. We've got a couple of naughty boys this morning. Obviously we had those two water buck. And I thought there was going to be a fight there. And it turns out the younger one just sort of stepped out, stepped out of the picture. Well, the the bigger male took charge, and now we've got a a male impala who's probably wanting to mate with this female, and she obviously is not having any of it, and he's being vocal about it. I had hoped that it was an alarm call and that somebody had seen something, some form of predator coming. Dogman lover, indeed, indeed, red heart beast are gorgeous animals. I've heard a lot of people saying that they're ugly. I personally don't see it. You know, all the antelope have their own unique look to them, which makes them unique, you know? It makes them special. Very little antelope out here that look exactly the same. Very similar, you know, you can have similar uh, features. Like, obviously, the Red Heart to Beast and the Chesapeake, they're very similar looking. Uh, not the same color, the Chesapeake a little bit darker, and their horns a little bit uh different shape they're not shaped the same but their body structure is pretty much the same you know they have those sloped backs which does help with the long distance running and uh you know you've obviously got the the springbuck and the parlor 
they also sometimes look fairly fairly similar to each other but uh obviously impala got a little bit of a longer neck but uh, that's also an animal that i've heard people mistaking for each other they're calling springbuck impala and impala springbuck Red Heart Bears and Topia are very similar. They're not exactly the same. You could call them cousins. Um, but yeah, them, the, them, the Topia and the Chester Bee are very, very similar. It, uh, yeah, basically just really comes down, you know, Red Heart Bears thrive down here. And uh, they, uh, you know, they've adapted to this area perfectly well. Whereas I think the other animals, you know, the Tessabee and the Topi, you don't find them so, so far down in Africa. You don't find them mostly kind of like uh, Kenyan, in, kind of around Kenya, Tanzania, top of Mozambique, top of Zambia, you know, those areas to more, more towards the, the center of Africa. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries, showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Had a cry, just croak over us as he was flying. No, our red heart of us are starting to get on the move. I can hear that there's monkeys not happy. There's lots of animals up here that, that I think are going to help us try, try and find this 
Tito. And the Red Heart De Beers are on their way, on their way off to the left. And across this field. And they're going to start moving to another a patch of grass where they can do some feeding. Welcome back live, everybody. We're, we're just on the other side of the Moati now. Just having a look. These little pans that we find scattered along this river system are perfect places to come and look for a little leopard track. You should sit like this and you'll be able to see it there. There's a warthog track, there's a whitetail mongoose track. Looks like that might even be a dwarf mongoose there. So these are points of interest. Unfortunately there are lots, lots of these around at the moment. So as we just drive along this drainage system, I keep checking these along the way as we go. And obviously trying to see tracks on the road as well, but sometimes it's a bit tricky. So if you missed our discussion before, we uh, we did track those lines and uh, they were found, but uh, just crossing Triple M to the west. So two male lines, or at least one, but we believe two came in from the south and they were calling, 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 and those lines had come down towards Spaghetti Junction and they just said, ah, uh ah, -uh, we're out of here. So they came past our camp in the night, thought they'd be nice and comfortable in Juma. Male lions started calling, they probably don't know who they are, or they do know who they are, and they're like, nope, we don't want to hang out with you. They went off in the other direction, all the way back pretty much the way that they'd come. Bit of a loop. So disappointing, but it's nice to have tracked them. We tracked them far, tracked them really far. Thankfully we weren't walking, or well, that would have taken us half the morning. But they're literally tracked. And they literally crossed Triple M as we were getting there. Janet, at the moment, I don't get too confused with tracks when they're clear, but uh, you can get confused when the ground isn't very hard. Um, when the ground isn't soft, I mean. When it's hard, you just get a scuff. So after rainy conditions when the ground is hard, tracking is difficult. But uh, for the most part, most of the little tracks, most of the medium sized tracks are all quite discernible for me. But that's just through lots and lots of practice. Obviously if I went to an area where there were some new animals, I'd have to, I'd have to figure some things out. But tracking is a is a wonderful wonderful skill to develop. I mean, we spend most of our times here looking for for lion, leopard tracks, wild dogs when they pop up. Wild dogs, you don't confuse with hyena. The gait is very different. The size is different and the way that they they register is different. If you don't register, it's the way that they land. Wild dogs cannot stand on their front foot. But uh, Wildcat and Janet, the difference between them can be quite tricky to identify. France, have I bumped into hippo on bushwalk? Yes, I have. Many times. Um, the, the best thing to do is to be the first one to know to, you see the hippo before they see you and then give them space. You just move away. You don't even try and close the gap. You just give space immediately. And the hippo 
suddenly just goes in the direction that he wants to go which um, they, they're not looking to to harm us really they feel threatened so if you move into a hippo's direction he's going to feel threatened so always move out of the direction he's going open the space that is the key you open the space like a clock and you give them more opportunity to find their own way and that's what you need to do uh, generally they want to go back downhill back down towards the water so if you are walking along a river or you on your way past a dam or something and the, the dam is on this side and you see a hippo here you always go up this way the hippo is going to go down um, you must just remember that with a buffalo you got to do the opposite with a buffalo you've got to go towards the water and then you open that space to go which is quite interesting because buffalo are known to go to water when they are injured or threatened by lions but when it comes to us buffalo go away from water and they go uphill so if this is the the line of water you bump a right, uh, buffalo right here you just go straight down to the dam and the buffalo will go uphill and by opening that space they almost do so immediately okay well I think we're sending you over to Cedars to see how he's getting on with his tracks but I'm not 100% sure Cedric's probably going to fall that one. With, uh, with a male leopard, especially tortoise pan, out of all leopards. So, yes, that's why I am going to put my nose uh, down to the ground and uh, see if we can track him somewhere. Yeah. Well, while we're going to try and do that and uh, see if we can get where the last tracks were, let's head over to Eric. I hope you find that leopard. Cedric. Alright, we're sitting here having a look at this beautiful, 
beautiful scenery. This is one of, sorry, not one of, this is my favorite view on Amakala. It overlooks most of this area that uh, Miss Mpumelela operates in, and then a little bit of the main reserve as well. But it focuses mostly on the valleys. Now in the valleys here, there are a troop of baboons. Every now and then you'll hear one, of, one or two of them bark. And uh, sure, when these baboons fight, it echoes throughout the valleys. The screaming, the shouting. It can get a bit too, a bit too much. Now, Earth Week is coming up, ladies and gentlemen. On the 22nd of April, that will be Earth Day. And uh, while Earth is celebrating this Earth Week, this year's theme will be Planet versus Plastics. And it will run from the 22nd of April up until the 28th of April. Wild Earth will pay or play out one stunning insert per day. And it will be Monday and Tuesdays. There will be live safari in the PM drive only, not the AM drive. And that is Earth Week. It really is a beautiful area. It would be better if the sun was shining, but unfortunately the sun has gone behind some clouds. And, uh, well, the clouds are obviously hiding us from the sun rays. There's a baboon barking. Lizzo, there are bushwalks to be done. I don't do them, but... Uh, yeah, at Amakala, there, there is uh, the opportunity to do the Big Five bushwalk. And uh, it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's something that I'm, I must recommend. I always do. It, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we see from the vehicle. Obviously, we see a lot of cool things. But when you're on foot, there's so many small things that you can look at that will just blow your mind away. So yes, we do offer bushwalks here at Amakala. And uh, oh, you learn an awful lot on them. You learn all about tricks, you learn all about poo, all little bugs and beetles and flies and a lot of plants and all of that. I'm trying to figure out what these baboons are barking at. I can't see them. Doodle bug. Indeed, indeed, this is incredible. Like I said, this is my favorite, favorite uh, 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 location. And uh, if I was doing a uh, afternoon drive, this is where I'd come and do my drink stop. Definitely. This is uh, kind of nice little, look. it's not very level, however, we are on a slope <laughs> facing all the way down. Um, but uh, if you can find a place where you can level up the car so you can have a table, you'll be in absolutely winning. But, uh, quite nice. Not to show where this road goes. I've never seen this road up here, so we're kind of testing it. It looks to me like it is a roundabout, but that's fine. Oh, Darcy Miller, that would be quite something. The three amigos on foot. Imagine. And, uh, yeah, well, we know that cheetah are not very aggressive animals when it comes to people, so we know that they're not going to do too much. 
I think they actually just get each other. They just sit there and watch you, watch them. All right, this road is obviously a roundabout and uh, we're now gonna head back up the road, but we're not done here, we're not done. We're still gonna do a good amount of looking around in this area for our Miss Pumelele. Ooh, it helps to stay on the road. <laughs> Miss Pumalela, where are you? Show yourself, madam, please. Emerge. It's possible that's what the baboons were barking at. They were barking at her from a distance. Um, and at the same time, oh, baboons and cheetah, especially when she's got cubs, baboons are very dangerous. Um, and, uh, they do pose a very big threat to cheetah. They'll kill cheetah, no problem. I mean, baboons will kill leopards. If uh, a troop of baboons, you know, obviously leopards in the Western Cape do tend to go off the baboons because it's a food source that's quite close to them. You know, the baboons operate in the rock kingy areas and the mountainous areas. Well, so do the leopards. And uh, it's not uncommon to hear a troop of baboon has killed a leopard. They've just mobbed it. There's, you know, they're so powerful. Just one as it is. And then you get five of them that attack a leopard. It's, it's, it's almost impossible. So the same with the cheetah is if she sees the baboons or hears them hear them getting closer she's not going to stick around and especially not with her cubs i wouldn't say the baboons are the reason why we don't see our leopard well the leopards in amakala but i think they have a fair a fair part to play in it, maybe. Also the fact that it was all farmland. And uh, obviously they don't they don't enjoy being on the same area as farms. Anyway, we're gonna continue looking for our beautiful Miss Miss Pumalela. In the meantime we're gonna send you uh, to Cedric who has found some elephants. How beautiful is this a nice young male that's very close to us and then the, the rest of the herd has actually gone past. Quite a big herd that uh, came past us now. And uh, another male, so And uh, slowly, but they are moving, they are not happy. I can see the rest of the herd is actually running further on. Oh, look at these two young males having a little bit of a sparring battle here. But this is all more play than anything else. Typical for the young males, practicing, testing their strength out. A little bit of shoving now and again. One doesn't, want to, one doesn't want to play, he wants to rather go for a toilet break. That is so nice. Well, it's a big herd actually that came past here, maybe about 20, 25 of them. And let's watch these two young boys. And sometimes with these young males, testosterone is pretty much now, you know, kind of... Uh, Tightening up a bit, and you know, you know, at this age, usually coming to like 20, 20 years old, and then you get this like uh, a little bit of, how can I say, not aggressiveness, but more sparring with a bit of uh, force. Oh, look at that. One is actually just shoving the other one completely back, and then you'll find that the females in the herds and that they don't like it sometimes because all of a sudden they start picking, a, picking on the, the younger ones, the little calves. And then you'll find your matriarch and the old females in the herd say so get quite irritated with these young males. But they're nonsense. <laughs> Looks like they are moving away slowly but surely. I think, uh, Paul, let's see if we can follow them. Let's see if we can get uh, follow them here quickly. Darcy Miller, yeah, it is nice here yeah, seeing them like that. Uh, beautiful. I know it's, it's nice seeing this herd of elephants, but I think they're going straight. Oh, yeah, uh, they're going straight west into into Arethusa. But let's see if we can get there in time before they cross. 
Oh, they have that. No, they've crossed already. Yeah. Let's just double check here. Yeah, and see, then they're on quite a mission at the moment. You can see these two young ones here, at the, these two young males again. You can see that big road there. That's like our bound, western boundary road. And you can see they've already gone straight across. Well, at least nice to, to have a bit of elephants this morning. That is quite, uh, quite nice to have here. Yeah? Anna Marie, yes, always nice to watch uh, young males sparring like that. All right, as we say, we're still busy trying to follow up on uh, this male leopard tracks around this area. And that's exactly why we actually ended up bumping into these elephants. And apparently this male leopard has been coming up north towards uh, this big clearing that's just uh, to the, this behind us. And he might be in this block here somewhere. All right, I'm going to let this gentleman come past us here quickly because he's helping, he's helping us uh, trying to track down tortoise pan. So we're going to just try and get here while these elephants are disappearing. Oh. Morning! <laughs> All right, let's go a little bit. I might actually have the last view there. Are we going to have the last little view there? No, it looks like they're going away. All right, they are disappearing. All right, well, we're going to continue tracking down this male leopard. Let's head over to Steve. Thanks, Setters. The tracks here of a, of a male lion. I think sometimes you can't always be certain. Good to measure it. Can you see? <laughs> you can't. We've got this. We've got this boat of a car now, which is lovely, but uh, you can't see the track. I'm just going to measure quickly. Double check. Yeah, male lion. Now I think Cedric already had these tracks crossing out towards the west, uh, towards the east. But uh, we're just double checking. Let's just turn down the volume there. We're going to keep heading up here. No one's driven on this section, but. Cedric did call these tracks in, or male line tracks growing central to the east into Torchwood. So much lion activity at the moment, everybody. That's why our leopards are, are keeping themselves nice and hidden. Lots of lion activity this morning. Pan actually heard it while he was opening the gate before we came out, but I was just a little bit low. I didn't hear it. But apparently it was going all night. So a tumultuous time in the lion dynamic world here in the northern Sabi Sands. And I know Cedric checked Bovosuk this morning for um, that group of the Unkohumas. But um, I'm just going to double check because I mean even this morning when we had those tracks heading west, guys were on trouble and we go, we've checked, there's nothing here. And then they crossed like that. So these animals move. That's the one reality behind it is that you can check and someone can check half an hour later and can be lucky. So we didn't have any sign of Tlalamba. I checked a couple of the little spots I thought might be useful for her. No joy. I'm sure Cedric is going to have some luck while I'm away. I'll be back on the on the 8th to start on the 9th of May. And then things will have dried out a little bit. Water will be disappearing and only in the certain places so these animals will have to move some distance to try and find water. Okay, well, James had some time with Tlalamba on Monday morning. At Safari, always special to spend time with the Queen. So this is the tree that she stashed. <laughs> she stashed her diker in. 
and she seems to be utterly disbelieving of the fact that it is no longer there. Franklin shouting in disgust. Mm. Tell me when you lose sight of her. I think that's the clip of uh, Tlalamba coming back to try find her Deka that uh, wasn't there anymore. And when we had Maribs on uh, on Friday and then on Saturday morning, Panda and I came back and found him and he was standing vigil under a tree and it took us some time while a hyena was there and a hyena was interested and then we realized he was standing at the bottom of a very small tree which I think was depicted in that clip there and there was a Deka up that tree and then when I think it was with you again Panda the next morning when we actually saw Maribs first we tried to find him and then couldn't find him and then we found a hyena and then as the hyena came Panda heard something in the ambient mic he said oh there's growling and we looked and then Maribs came up the tree with what I thought initially was possibly a warthog but turns out to be a daker so he went and he stole Salamba's kill <laughs> and in that clip that was her coming up the tree being like where did it go? <laughs> I love that. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content. the male before. Now here is a female. Her track is just bigger than the knife by about two centimeters so that's 12. Another female just over 12 and a half probably adult sub-adult. So here we've got one, two, three, Four, 
four, definitely four. And there could be a third and fourth one in there. It becomes tricky when there's so many on one spot. But what we had six yesterday with a male. I don't, however, see the male's track here. Don't see the male's track here. His track would be a lot bigger. He might have uh, heard the calling and gone off to investigate, leaving the ladies. I don't see the male. Okay, but they're starting to get lost in amongst it. Four, five, makes about sense. But once there's three on a track like that, it becomes tricky, everybody. There's at least three or four, but I counted four. Darcy Miller, you need another great oh my word moment. It'll happen, it'll come. The time is imminent. <laughs> but I'm sure they're going to go straight into Torchwood now. Uh, the cheetah cut line boundary is right here. Right here. And we'll see if they're on top of the vehicle tracks. There's another thing we look at for freshness, everybody. See, they actually lay down. Oh, that's a wonderful track, Panda. Let me see if I can uh, improve it for us. And take a bit of practice getting used to driving this boat. How's that? Oh, good. Okay, so. One lioness is the, the tail, back foot, back foot. Now uh, remember they've got two back feet, right? <laughs> this one, this one, here yeah, she stood up. Yeah, her one leg rolled back and then it was sitting. Her bottom, another one. So at least two lay just over here and then stood off and it looks like they might have walked over there north, over here they jumped around. Where are you going? Where are you going? It's not on top of vehicle tracks. They don't seem to have crossed. Ah, oh, here they are. Oh, they've come back. They were lying all over here. There's at least, this is tortured now. One lay here, one lay here, one peed there. Okay, well, we'll figure out where they went to. They've probably gone off east into Torchwood and then we'll figure it out and then uh, we'll come back to you. But for now, let's send you all the way down to the Eastern Cape, my good man, Eric. Down the mountain, down the mountain, down the mountain, and going down into a little valley. And um, it's actually also one of my favorite roads. I, I, I'm a big fan of this road. It's either straight up or it's straight down. And that's exactly what we're doing. It's surrounded by um, what we call Kral Spike Thorn. Now, ah! And we've got attacked. Um, for those who don't know what kraal spikethorn is, it's uh, well, what a kraal is. A kraal is uh, like a paddock. Ooh, what does that smell? There's a very musky smell of animal here. Um, a kraal is like a little paddock where farmers keep their sheep. Uh, it's normally outside and surrounded by like thorn trees, um, bushes. Ooh, here we go, some 4x4. Four four. Um, so, uh, <laughs> they used to use it to kind of plant around the, 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 the kraals or the little paddocks, the farmers. And, uh, and they've got these nasty, nasty thorns. If you thought a sweet thorn had a long thorn on it, this is worse. Um, and uh, we are basically in this little passage. Ooh, handbrake up. Okay, hold, hold. There we go. Um, this is uh, something that you don't want to get involved with. It is 
very very sharp and these thorns i mean the thorns are incredibly incredibly hard they they break but uh, it, it takes some doing to get them to break they're more spines than they are thorns because they have parts of leaf on them the difference between a spine and a thorn is a thorn is a modified leaf and a spine is a modified branch of the bush that is why there's still leaves coming off of the thorns yeah because it is a modified branch and um i was saying to morgan that these these bushes are absolute bad news <laughs> for vehicle tires and uh well, this keeps everything out. You don't, you're not going to find lions crawling through this, leopards crawling through this, baboons. No, absolutely not. This is uh, some serious stuff there. Are we in the right gear? Now we are. Woo! Very rocky at the bottom here. Obviously very, very bumpy. We love a little bit of bumpy and we like a little bit of a 4x4 four four expedition. and the perfect car to do it. Ah, she did that very, very well with the, with the help of low range first gear. Cat, what's the best and worst smell of the bush? The best smell has obviously got to be some form of flower. Um, I do like the smell of... Uh, what is it called? Uh, we don't have it in the Eastern Cape, but in the Western Cape it's called Mountain Buhu. I love the smell of Mountain Buhu. It's got a very, very uh, sensual smell. And then, obviously, Wild Rosemary that has a very nice smell to it as well. Ooh, I'm going to fall out here. Uh, the worst smell. An animal that has died, it's two things, two smells. An animal that has died in a specific area and there's no ventilation of it and the sun has baked down on this poor dead animal for like the last week of 30 to 40 degree temperatures. That, that smell, where they, where the, oh no, I don't even want to begin to describe what it must look like, but um, that is not a good smell. The other thing that's not very nice is the smell of lion poo. Lion poo is horrible. It's when, oh, it's enough to clear a room. It, it's probably, yeah, that, that's the worst smelling thing, I think. Um... Yeah, I think that's about it, really. Those two things are not good. Not good at all. It's a bit hard to be a skull there. Very interesting place. I'm sure this is where animals would definitely come and, you know, uh, 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 spend their last sort of few hours. When an animal is sick, and it knows that the end is near, they actually isolate themselves, you know? They go off and they find a place where they feel happy and they feel comfortable, you know? And that way they can, you know, leave, leave this earth on their conditions, you know? Not <laughs> being uh, mauled alive by some other animal. Oh my goodness. Been a while since I came down this road, and uh, obviously erosion has taken place here. Linda, yeah, I will agree with you. Yes, domestic cat poo is not the greatest either. Um, oh, I don't know. And it's it's all got to do with the fact that what they eat is just meat. So. No teeth broken down.
be wrong by, by saying this, but I think it's only crocodiles that are, have the fluids. Crocodiles and hyena, maybe? To, to digest teeth. Teeth are very, very strong. All right. We're going to continue going down this path. We'll send you. Still trying to follow up on this uh, male leopard. I'm not going to give up, you know. That's always about persistence and trying to see. Ooh, what do we have there? It's not a, it's not a leopard, but it's uh, some leopard food. Oh, no, there was. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> it was just a, it was just a lonely female impala that was just running this way, funny by herself, all by herself. So I'm going to carry on going up here. <clears throat> but she got a fright and she decided to bolt, bolt off to the south. All right, let's continue going up here slowly but surely. This is exactly where I heard the guys said that I had the last tracks for him. So in this area. In this area. But oh, it's so nice just being back in. This is the fresh air. You know, that's what I love about uh, being out here in the bush. It's just the fresh air that you get. It's amazing. It almost gives me like running, like a runny nose because it's so fresh. And I had the worst aeroplane trip in my life yesterday. Ever. Ever, ever. When, they, when I'm talking about when I'm turbulence. <laughs> And I mean, like, I, I, I enjoy like flying and all that. Now and again, you get that bit of turbulence where, like, you know, your stomach goes funny and you get those butterflies and all that. But yesterday, oh my word, I think there were so many air pockets there above Johannesburg while we were coming flying in because I came from George flying into to uh, Johannesburg, and um, I hit so many air like air pockets. Well, I didn't hit it; the pilot did. I don't know why I didn't avoid them. Anyway, I guess you can't, <laughs> I guess you just don't know where they are. And, uh... on safari.
Uh, no, no luck. No luck on, a, on even a single leopard track. That's that's a thing. And I would like to see that leopard track. Then I can say, well, how fresh and which way and all that. But I said it was coming into this area, and I haven't seen a single track. What do you think before we try the last little bit around there again? Eh? Pile of yeah. planes, I think so as well. Maybe with that huge herd of elephants that came past just now, it might have um, pushed uh, that leopard off to the side, maybe kind of avoided those elephants. That's also a huge possibility, so let's go and take a look around there. And Steve said he's also got some nice line tracks for to the same lines that we or the line tracks that we had. I think they might have got into Tor into Torchwood and then they came back into Juma and then maybe back into Torchwood, maybe following something, maybe chasing one another around. No idea. It looked like there's a few males involved there. So yeah, just looking at something here quickly. I thought I saw something. I thought I saw some tracks on top of my vehicle tracks. Yeah, and that's always a nice. That's that's the, the exciting part. If you, well, pretty much, I came past here about 20 minutes ago. So if I see like maybe leopard tracks or lion tracks on top of my vehicle tracks, yeah, mm. then I know that's uh, that's fresh. But there's nothing. Yeah, well, as you know, this is the, a live and interactive show. So if you've got uh, any comments or some nicer questions that you want to send through to us or a suggestion for this morning or for this afternoon, you send them through. Make sure that you do register on our Wild Earth website so you can send those comments and questions through. Nothing, nothing, yeah. Well, one thing, we're walking along the coast there now when I was on leave, and um, I love, you know, just the beach area and just the big dunes in that area. Oh, it is so, so beautiful. That's why I say South Africa's got so many beautiful places, you know, from from here in the Greater Kruger National Park with uh, the wild animals in this area towards uh, the Drakensberg, you know, the Drakensberg mountain range, right, stretching from here all the way through to the south uh, eastern corner of uh, South Africa as well. Beautiful areas that the coastal lines are stunning. So yeah, the, the diversity here is amazing. Absolutely amazing. You'll never get tired touring South Africa. I think you've always got all beautiful stunning areas from all corners so yeah very very privileged to have a country like this but anyway well we're going to continue up to the northeastern corner of uh, juma and see what else we can find around here let's head over to amakala to see what's happening with eric We've come out of the valleys, we are now on the open flats and uh, yeah, yes, I must agree with Cedric there, you'll never get bored travelling South Africa. There's just so much to see, so much diversity, great. Mm -hmm. We're jumping, this is a very bumpy road, a very, very, very bumpy road. Um, but nonetheless, we're moving. I had a question, are Laura Moore, how do you know what <laughs> um, polar bear poo smells like? I'm just curious. I'm just curious. But I can't imagine it. it uh, I definitely can't imagine it smells pleasant at all. I suppose uh, uh, a creature that lives around the sea, that feeds on other sea creatures and fish definitely cannot smell very nice. Anyway, um, yeah, 
with uh, Miss Pumelela has evaded us. She's hiding very, very well. Um, there's still a possibility we could see her. What's that? You see that? I have no idea what that is. Let's, let's see. There's something that looks very. Cheetah. Yes, it, it 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 has that cheetah look to it, but I don't know. We don't know what it is, really. Let me have a look. See here, we can hopefully try and get to the bottom. If she's been lying here the whole time. Mm. I'll just turn my phone. Oh, there's a bone. That is a carcass. Uh, I saw what looked like part of the backbone. Now, what we're looking at is basically the head of whatever it was. I think it was black wildebeest. Once upon a time, that uh, somebody has uh, obviously dispatched. It is wildebeest no more. Oh. Mm, we got very excited there. At the moment, everything looks like cheetah. Anything small. Oh, but it also is now starting to get very, very warm. Uh, it's getting to the point where I highly doubt that she's going to be very, very active. Not in the heat of today. No, 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 no. This is a very warm day. And... Uh, I think I'm going to start taking my layers off very, very soon. Otherwise, I'm going to overheat. And obviously, that is not what we want right now. You never know, she could be somewhere around here. Um, usually when she comes down from the valleys and uh, she comes out into the open she'll normally hang around in the area kind of around this thicket area for a bit before she starts actually moving up um, onto the open flats where our springbuck and, and black wildebeest and blessbok and all the all the plains game hang out So the river is not too far from here and in this part of the river uh, of the Bushman's River there will be water in it there will be fresh water as uh, oh, this is pretty much the area that had the most amount of water all the way from those rains of last year so the November October November end time when we had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of rain filled up a lot of the river down here which is actually quite nice for the animals it actually restricted us because there's a road that goes down here in the crossing and the the water level was so high there was no way you taking a car through there without drowning it so everybody who wanted to cut across here they had to go all the way around and all the way around again to get to the outside But it was, it was very cool to be able to see that amount of water in the river again. I just wish that the whole river was like that. That would have been something. So, we're nearly at the end of this very, very, very bumpy road, full of the deepest potholes. Little craters there are. And the landscape's going to start changing fairly, fairly soon from this very shrubby, very bushy, kind of long grass area. And uh, we're going to start going into the flat, flat open plains. Not shortest grass, but fairly shortest grass.
Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visit lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. in this uh, sort of fan bossy area, a lot of blue bush in this area uh, and some other fan boss species, plants. The cattails are starting to come out now which is quite nice. It's a little yellow flower with a, a little point like that and it gets these little fluffy yellow flowers around the outside, outskirts of that little point. Eventually the whole thing will become these beautiful little purple pink why am I saying pink purple or pink they're yellow <laughs> it's beautiful it's because I'm probably either seeing these these yellow um, sorrel or oxalis flowers and uh, mm, smells very very nice here very very nice indeed I can't wait till all of our winter flowers are in full bloom it's going to be something to see, very beautiful. And I think it's going to start definitely now in uh, May. April, May, May, June, no, May, June, July. I think those are going to be the months that we're going to be looking forward to in terms of flowers. Ooh, bumpy. Welcome back everybody, welcome back. Oh, we've got a couple of spur fowls under the bush there. Bivelsuk Dam was uh, uneventful. The tracks of those lions gone into Tortured and they have been found around a Tortured Dam. So they didn't move very far, I didn't anticipate them moving very far. But it's possible that the male lion that was calling was maybe one of the Kambulas and possibly that's why um, maybe the other male went to go catch up with him because apparently there's five lionesses and at least one male at that watering hole that I heard from somebody we bumped into. But talking about water, these sort of pans, everyone, these seasonal pans, this is the same pan that the black dam males uh, spent that, what, five days at. This was nearly dry then and because of the rain we had while Cedric's been away, all of these little pans and wallows are well and truly recharged but it's not just that I mean we've got the Franklin there moving around our grass species 
are not only just growing their leaves again, but they are actually going back into flower. So the signal grass here and many other grasses are going through seeding again. So once these seeds have been pollinated, actually, they're not quite ready. They're not quite at that stage yet where they're chewy. It's all quite hard. It's because actually you can see underneath there. Can you see it, Panda? Yeah. That pollen. is the pollen. Sorry if I'm moving. That is the pollen of these grasses pushing out the end of these little stalks. And once the pollen gets accumulated and collected and wind pollinated in general, um, the pollen will then go inside fertilizing the seed and then that whole thing of, of potential seeds there will turn into seeds and our seeding birds, seed eating birds will go crazy once again. So for now I can't really eat that bit but I can definitely eat the bottom. The growth points of grasses everybody is the basil so they grow from the base. These leaves constantly growing here this is how the new leaves form. There's a new leaf there forming. Leaf sheath, leaf sheath, new grass. So it's growing from the bottom. And then the sexual reproduction parts. And then this bit is always growing. That's why it's tasty. Mmm, yummy. Luna, have I ever eaten anything in the bush? It's made me sick. No, not yet. I'm wary of what I eat in the bush. If I don't know if it's edible, I don't eat it. If I'm testing it, I eat little, 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 little bit. Uh, there's nothing worse than being sick out on safari on a five, six day backpack trail when you, the only toilet you have is a hole in the ground that you dig with your own shovel. You do not want to have anything going on in the tummy, I can assure you. So if you're not sure, don't. <laughs> if you're starving though, well, then you've got to go through a few mechanisms to get you to the point where you can eat something, but yeah, we can, we can follow monkeys, what monkeys feed on. Baboons somehow are able to deal with certain plant parts that we don't have the constitution for, so err on the side of caution with baboon. But monkey, we have a very similar constitution to monkeys. Just want to have a little look around here. This is uh, the den site where Tandy was born, down in the depths of the drainage. Elizabeth, yes, the rains bring life. Water brings life. Water is the currency of life, and some birds will actually breed again. Our spur fowls will probably have had another. Now the clutch, because there's an abundance of food, some birds that are staying for, that don't migrate, might even have gone into another breeding cycle. It's amazing what rain can do. And uh, many of the trees have gone back into flower, many of the grasses have, many of the wildflowers have come out. So it is a summer driven system, which means that that's when we see all of those flowers and things happening. But if the rain happens a bit late, if it happens in autumn, well, those plants will respond. They're not really going, oh, hang on, it's autumn, it's rained, we can't flower. They flower because the, the abundance has come. There we go, you can see one of the yellow justitias there in amongst the grass, one of our many herbaceous plant species. Nice long stalk with a yellow flower. It's a time of plenty on the African savanna, and we go through these wet and dry periods and we most certainly have been in a wet period since 2018. They say there's a seven year cycle. So we're nearing the opposite end of that cycle, which means that in a year or two, we'll probably be going into more dry cycle and we'll see that drought. It's a natural occurrence in these parts. 
and it's followed quite a long history of a sort of seven year cycle, wet, seven year cycle, dry and a lot of it to do with nothing at all around us, it's all coming from the oceans the El Niños, El Niños, all linked but now time of plenty Okay, Panda, well, let's carry on around the corner here. This is the Nyala Road South Road with a drainage line over there, which has been very good for the Karula lineage breeding. It's got to find a track going in, and then we'll know. But we know that Miss Tlalamba is very secretive. And James was tracking her the other day and it's possible that she might have denned on the south but uh, don't know we don't know I haven't had much activity in this area but we do know that she's a very secretive cat when it comes to her babies just takes one track coming in or out of an area for us to to get a strong feeling mm. Linda the Safari Sentinel is so nice and shiny I mean it's brand new <laughs> we did have wash down Wednesday yesterday so James uh, Panda actually recorded James cleaning this car didn't you Panda? I did. Um, shortly after that he also recorded James dragging the vacuum cleaner as if he was about as if it weighed about 400 kilograms um, yeah <laughs> he can be a little bit of a clown everybody <laughs> just frame him with the camera and he he just switches on he just switches on you want James to do something? Just frame him. Hey, you'll do it. Mm. Okay, so we're coming through Spaghetti Junction crossing area now where we originally picked up on where the, the whole pride had been lying or it turns out to be four of them and then probably at that point is when the males started calling in the south and then they they just what we would say practically balegged they moved quite quickly their tracks in the opposite direction which is common practice for a pride with sub-adults that aren't related to the, the males calling they're just like no I'm not getting involved with them we're going in that direction oh how time flies when you're having fun <laughs> oh. Wild Earth is turning 17 and we want to make the years count. <laughs> 17 years of achievements, close encounters and special memories. He's got it, he's got it and he's straight up a tree. Come along as we reflect on our top 17 greatest moments. Here's to more years of connecting you to nature. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
And I think one thing about Jordan is that, uh, you know, she loves singing. Uh, even if she has to count us out of a, a segment or if she's, uh, you know, giving us a question or something like that, she'll sing it to us. She won't just say like, you know, three, two, one. She'll three, two, one. So she, she makes it uh, quite interesting. Thanks, Jordan. I need that little bit of a tune in my ear for the morning. It's always nice. Uh, no, nothing this side. All right. Well, I took a chance here. Yeah. I thought maybe come down on one more, one more go down. Yeah, I'm going to just turn around this side yeah, on Zoe's. But uh, no, nope. this uh, leopard has definitely eluded us this morning and uh, he did not want to be seen. That's all right. This afternoon, it's, uh, this afternoon is again, uh, uh, again, a good old three hours out on safari. I'm sure this afternoon we'll get something amazing. We are going up a very, very bumpy, bumpy, bumpy part of this road. We are back on the main reserve. Um, wow. Miss Pumalela will be discovered another day. We will not give up. We will find her eventually at some stage. Just maybe not today. <laughs> Sorry. So when we were crossing over from one side to the other, we obviously had to go through a gate. There was a take-a-lock truck that obviously just turned around and I'm seeing that take-a-lock truck going back again. It turned around on the road and went back towards Port Elizabeth. Now I can see this truck going back towards Grahamstown. Confused. Very confused. But um, yeah, even though we've come up empty-handed, it's been a uh, rather enjoyable uh, sunrise safari, I think. We had a very nice sunrise this morning. We sat with some beautiful water buck. We sat with one massive, massive uh, uh, Irland bull. Kelly, indeed we did, indeed we did. I think it was spectacular this morning. Um, like I said, a bit unfortunate we were empty-handed, but that's that's how it goes, you know. That's that's what it's like out here in the bush. You're never guaranteed to see all the animals that you want to see. You have the possibility to see them, never guaranteed. And uh, you know, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you get unlucky. But it's why we keep coming back out here, you know. That, that, that just that little bit of oh, that hint we, we might be able to find something we might be able to get her or it just might not but uh, I think all around it's been quite a quite a good drive we've had lions we've had elephants and uh, no it's been lovely and warm we will obviously be going back out this afternoon obviously three o'clock with on safari half past three we will start with the kiddies drive first wait what are we thursday yes we'll start with the kiddies drive and then uh, half past four we'll start at the adult drive and uh, we're hoping we can see lots of animals this afternoon it's going to be another warm day and uh, we are going to uh, yeah definitely think we're going to be at waterholes this afternoon it's a very 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 warm day here at amakala like again, like I said, we will, 3 o'clock we'll start on safari, half past 3 we'll be back in the afternoon. After this now we'll be live at the water hole, so for those who want to keep watching some more, you are more than welcome to, there will be live at the water hole. Elizabeth, I'm just as excited. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what we're going to find for you this afternoon. Lovely and green. It really is. I've loved 
driving through the reserve and seeing how happy it looks you know after that rain so we need the cold weather to come back so that the the heat doesn't burn off our lovely green grass as we are climbing up the ridge line exiting the basin back to the June forest where we'll see you all this afternoon.